All right, so today I want to make a very brief video, which is just a general overview of the different parts and pieces I used on the front of this uh, 80s roller block to uh, retrofit it into old 60s cars. Also, you know, if you're dropping into a Mazda Miata, Ford Ranger, something where you have a uh, manual steering gearbox, you know, this tends to work pretty well also. But anyway, what I do is I take a lot of these old 80s roller engines and retrofit them for 60s cars, put five speeds behind them and drop them in. The most recent one I did was a very budget swap on a Ford F100 and um, you know, it's it's pretty simple and straightforward and I'll leave the link for that below if you're interested. But anyway, the point of this video here again is to look at this front timing cover and water pump assembly and uh, its parts and pieces. Um, you know, really it seems like it should be a pretty easy task to find things that all line up nice without any fooling around, but you know, really it, it ended up being very difficult uh, to some degree. So we're just going to look at these these parts and I'll leave all the part links and um, everything below so you can go and source this if after watching this video it's something you want to do. So basically starting out, um, you know, the 80s blocks, they have reverse flow water pumps, you know, a lot of different stuff that doesn't really work with um, our old school 60s cars. Of course you can put it in but it's going to look ugly and not of the era and ultimately this in my opinion looks a lot better than a bunch of serpentine belts running all over the place. So um, looking at this thing here, just to go through the parts and pieces, we have a 1968 Mustang um, timing cover. Now this accepts the standard flow water pump, which is important for our V-belt setup. It also has the provision, which you can of course plug for our dipstick on the front, which if you're familiar with the 80s block, our dipstick normally goes in the back. But on the 65 Galaxy this is going into, we have a front sump oil pan, so um, our dipstick needs to accommodate that. Now also on this engine it's going to be run with an electric fuel pump, but I did install the uh, mechanical fuel pump eccentric as a backup and then I used our little cover plate. And I found that that's, that's just a really nice handy thing to have because I'm going to drive this engine on, uh, or <laughs> drive the Galaxy with this engine in it on power tour, you know, and if, if a pump fails it's nice to have a backup like that. Uh, now, some of the most important conversion pieces here, of course, are the harmonic balancer. Now, back in the day, these Fords had a different balance. It was a 28-ounce imbalance, and when they went to the roller engine, it switched to a 50-ounce imbalance. Now, what's nice about this harmonic balancer is it's a 50-ounce imbalance for our roller block, but it has all the bolt patterns to accommodate both the three-bolt pulley style, which is... Um, uh, what the old 60s cars had and what you will find with most V-belt stuff. And it also has the four bolt style, you know, if you are going to run something with serpentines. And then um, it has all the different timing marks to accommodate uh, the different positions that you could have with your timing cover, which is really nice because on our old school style, we come in here from the driver's side and it utilizes those timing marks. So that's really awesome. A really good piece there. Uh, you know, really good. I've had very good luck with those. Now, um, the biggest thing with your pulleys is you don't want to have to use any spacers. That's extremely annoying. So, um, these are from Transdap, I believe. And again, all the part numbers will be b below. But, uh, <laughs> man, these are really nice. No spacers. They bolt right up to everything without any issues. Um, that being said, this is a Duralast water pump. It's supposedly a high output style, but the stock water pump that you also could just get from O'Reilly's where this one actually comes from AutoZone. I'll leave the part number, of course, but um, you know, it's, it's just a stock style standard rotation water pump and our uh, water pump pulley bolts right to it without any issues and no spacers. So these line up very nice. Um, then moving on from there, just our standard old school um, alternator brackets, which these are extremely cheap and easy to come by. They're on Summit, and I'll leave the part number for those. But, you know, again, that's keeping with the old 60s style look, and I really like that. And I know you're going to say something when I'm talking about keeping with the 60s styles about this HEI, but bear with me. Here is why I went ahead and went that route. So, again, um, we have our alternator here, and you'll notice this is a hybrid alternator. It is a GM style back end with a Ford style um, front end here. It is a one wire from Tough Stuff Performance, I think. 
and I've had pretty good luck with these. I've run a lot of miles on them without any issues. Now the one thing to note, if we can get our dang old chair out of the way, the one thing to note when you when these come in, and I have no idea why, they are clocked where this stud is very close to your cylinder head over on this side. It's it's beyond me why they're done this way, but you know maybe it's for a different application. I'm not sure, but you can loosen these bolts here, and then you know you don't want to separate too far, just enough to rotate everything, and then you can reclock it over here where it's nice and safe, and you're not going to have a dead short right to your to your engine and grenade your battery. So I actually found a few pictures here of how it would bolt up if you do not reclock the back part of the alternator. Perhaps it's designed for being used on the passenger side. Could be. I don't really know. But it doesn't take much here. Again, simply remove the case bolts and reclock the back cover for a more safe orientation, and you're good to go. So these work out really well. I really like the one wire style because, again, you can take this and drop it into any vehicle. That is the idea behind our HEI distributor. We can take this engine setup, all of it, and drop it into any vehicle. It accommodates an electric fuel pump, a mechanical fuel pump, whatever we want to do. Now, the purpose of this engine here. Uh, this Mabco engine short block and, and everything, and if you follow my channel, you might, might be more familiar with it, was to be able to order everything in on Monday, and then by the weekend, you'd have all your parts in, you could assemble your engine in one or two days, and then have a completed engine by the end of Sunday. And I think we have all the parts and the parts list to make that attainable. So anyway, again, I guess our final piece here is our... Um, uh, our dual pulley setup and Tough Stuff sells this. If you are running one of these one wire alternators, I highly recommend it or else they just, with a V-belt and a 100 amp, they definitely squeal at startup. And I've seen that, um, you know, just <laughs> if you can alleviate that, uh, obviously you don't have to look like a fool when you fire your car up at the car show. So, um, and what's really nice is, is these pulleys already came in a dual pulley configuration and it, it all just fits together very nice. Now hold up here really quick. It looks like I may have gotten just a bit ahead of myself with what I was trying to say. So the Tough Stuff alternator comes with a single V-belt pulley and they do offer a dual V-belt pulley, which is what you see here in my video. Now I highly recommend purchasing this as that one single V-belt won't, it just won't handle that 100 amp load without slipping during high amp draw scenarios at low RPM. So I got the pulley part number of course listed below and I highly recommend that if you go this route with this alternator. Now, um, I guess our final piece to touch on with our front sump pan, uh, of course, again, it has our timing cover from the 68 Mustang, has the provision for the front mounted dipstick, but um, of course you can plug this. Now, this one is a braided unit from Moroso where you can make your own marks on it. And Summit was very good to me where I ordered in a cheaper one from Transdap, I believe, and it just wasn't clocked correctly to get back to a bolt without uh, or a bolt hole without putting a bunch of dumb spacers on it. It's stuck way out of the engine. It was just extremely ugly. So anyway, I, I gave him a call and either it was it was made poorly or whatever. It didn't line up quite right. And, you know, they, they covered the cost of that and sent me this one where, you know, I didn't have to send that, that other one back or anything. So that was really nice on their part. But um, anyway, back to our point here. That's just kind of a general overview and walkthrough of my front um, setup. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me today. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I really do like this setup. It's extremely awesome, and I can't wait to get this thing dropped in the old 65 Galaxy and, um, you know, rip through that five-speed enter. So anyway, uh, stick around for that. That'll be this spring, but uh, that's it for me today. I'll catch you guys later.